In a previous video, we wrote a simple program to make our motor spin. Now, in order to make this program work, we had to first fish through IntelliSense, take a look at the commands that were listed, and then read a pop-up description to make an informed choice. But what if there was an easier way to generate the correct Python code without all of the guesswork? In this lesson, I will demonstrate how to use Blockly as a sort of help system to the Python. Let's see how to do this. The goal of this video is to understand what is Blockly and its relationship to Python. We'll then examine the structure of a typical Blockly program, learn how to get it to run on a VEX robot, and finally, how we can convert a Blockly program to an editable Python project. Blockly is a graphical tool by Google that can be used by beginners to learn programming languages. It uses interlocking graphical blocks to represent code concepts like variables, logical expressions, loops, and more. And this allows users to apply programming principles in an English-like language without having to worry about syntax or the intimidation of a blinking cursor on a command line. Blockly can be used to generate code in other programming languages such as Python, and for that reason alone, it is an excellent tool for beginners. Blockly programs always begin with a start block and then flow sequentially from top to bottom until there are no more blocks left to execute. In a larger Blockly program with nested blocks, the program execution will always be from top to bottom and with the outside blocks executing before inside blocks. Let's create a Blockly program to make our robot move. In a previous movie, we wrote some simple Python code to make our right motor spin forwards at 50% power. And you might recall that as we were typing this, so if I type vex, every time I used the dot operator, I got this little pop-up menu. And if I wasn't sure of what I was looking for, there was a list of recommended commands that I could use. So I could keep leafing through my options here. Or if I started typing, for example, the letter V for velocity units, we can see that it pops up here as the second from the top of the list. So we have vex.velocityunits.pct for percentage power. Let's take a look at how we can use Blockly to generate this exact same Python code. I'm going to come up here to My Projects. And let's create a new project. It's going to be for Vex v5. The language is going to be Blockly. And let's call this Write Motor Spin. So we go Write Motor Spin and hit Create. So because my robot is already turned on and plugged into my computer, we can see that uh, Robot Mesh Studio found all of the peripheral devices, such as the motors and my vision sensor. Now as a formality here, I might go to the extra step of labeling these just so I know what it is I'm controlling. So from memory here, my motor on port 1 is motor right. I have on port 10 motor left. And I had to reverse the polarity for my right motor. So let's go up here and reverse polarity. I'm just going to stretch out my device monitor to make it a little bigger. So here we are in a Blockly project. Um, recall that all Blockly projects always start with a start block. If this is hard for you to read, you can come to the uh, bottom right corner here, and there's a little plus and minus sign, so I can magnify this to make it bigger, or use the minus sign to zoom out. So let's grab my start block. You'll notice in Blockly that all of the blocks are organized by functionality. So all the blocks related to motors are here in the motor library. Blocks related to logic, loops, math are all color coded to help you out. I'm going to come up here to motors and I'm going to grab this top block. Now, generally speaking, in Blockly, the more commonly used the block is, the greater the likelihood is that it will be at the top of this list. So usually, blocks that you're going to be using frequently are at the top less commonly used blocks at the bottom. That's not always the case, but it's a good rule to live by. So because motors spinning is something that we're probably going to always want to do, we'll find this block here at the top. So I'm going to grab the motor spin block. There's a little exclamation mark that's telling me that I haven't specified what motor that I want to spin. So I'm going to change this to my right motor. It's going to spin forward, and it's going to spin forward at 50% power. In the robot mesh library, there are all of my generic blocks that are related to program execution. So here I will find my sleep block. And let's make this sleep for 10 seconds. 
And now that we're done, we will run the program and see if it works. Perfect. Now something pretty amazing happened in the background when we were writing our code. You might notice that up here to the right of the Blockly tab is a tab called Generated Code. And what it actually did is it punched out all of the correct Python that corresponded to those Blockly blocks. In fact, if I wanted to, I could dock this tab next to my Blockly window. So let's just play with my sizing a little bit. And I could keep adding to this program. So say, for example, maybe I want my left motor uh, now to spin. I could grab another block. Watch what happens over here on the Python side. As I begin building my Blockly script, it starts creating the Python for it in real time. So now you can see that I've added a motor left. I'm just going to close my device monitor so we can see this. So I have a motor left spin now forward. Maybe my left motor is going to spin at 100% power. And then I'm going to sleep uh, for three seconds. So the left motor is going to spin for three seconds. And perhaps I want to be cheeky afterwards and um, print a message like, um, I don't know, Blockly is awesome. Blockly is awesome. And you can see that it built that all. Now, as I delete blocks, so if I grab blocks and pull them down to the trash can, you can see that the Python is also disappearing in real time. So since I have a working real life program, uh, let's now copy it and create an editable Python project. So I found the commands that I want to use, but you'll notice that I can't edit or type into this window. It won't let me. So what I'm going to do is hit options, copy my project, and I'm going to call this right motor spin um, Python because now this will be a Python project and the project type will go from being a VEX v5 Blockly project to being a VEX v5 Python project and I will click OK. And now you'll see that I can actually edit this file. So if I wanted to change the sleep to be uh, five seconds or maybe I want this to be in reverse, I can do that. Now the question always comes up, could I have gone the other way? Could I have taken my Python project and turned it back into a Blockly program? And the short answer is no. Uh, what will happen though if I do try and copy this as a Blockly project, so let's go back up here to Options, Copy Project, and change it now from a Python project. Um, let's call this Blockly Test. So now I will go back to Blockly. You'll see that this code checkbox is grayed out. So exporting code is not supported between selected project types. If I hit OK, what it will do is Robot Mesh Studio will remember your uh, device configuration. So here on the right hand side, all of my peripheral devices, motors and sensors, and what I called them. So you'll recall that I named this motor right and motor left. It remembers all of that. But the Python code is gone. So there is no more Python code. And there are no Blockly blocks. Now, as you can see, Blockly is a pretty awesome tool for learning how to program in Python. So if you've enjoyed this video, consider pressing the like button and subscribing to this YouTube channel for more updates on using Robot Mesh Studio with VEX robots.